Roger Federer and all of your other favorite professional tennis players miss easy put away shots at the net all the time. And if that's frustrating for you when you do it, then you need to watch this video because I'm gonna deconstruct and break down exactly why it happens to the pros and then let you know how you can avoid it and even show you some drills that you can do to train better success when you're up there at the net trying to put the ball away. So if that sounds exciting to you, if you can't wait to get rid of those easy mistakes, click the thumbs up button and let's dive right into it. Our first example comes to us from Alexander Zverev. Check out this, this kind of high floating, albeit high, you know, backhand volley, but obviously for him, a really easy shot. And really, honestly, the first thing I want to point out here is just the simple fact that he's a way better tennis player than I could ever dream of being, and probably you too. And he's getting this high sitter kind of floating shot and just sh totally shanking it completely off the court. And that's why we're starting with this one, because this is like an extreme example of a professional player hitting a ball not even close to the strings, and that's why the ball flies off in a different direction. You can see right here, clearly, his strings here are facing in this direction. He's kind of trying to angle the ball off in the, the opposite side of the court to finish the points, and instead of hitting the strings, he just simp simply hits the ball right off the edge of the racket. You just kind of barely see the, the racket in there. And so he just completely mishits the ball. And anytime that happens, the ball is going to go in a completely different direction than what you intended it to go. You know, kind of a comedic miss here. But we do this all the time on the courts. And it's critical to point out and identify what is the root cause. And the root cause here for Zverev and all the rest of us when we make this mistake is just simply hitting off the edge, the extreme edge of the outside of the frame. At this point, maybe you're saying to yourself, well, thanks for the hot tip, Ian. Like, don't hit the frame with the ball. It's not always that obvious. And so I wanted to start with a very extreme kind of obvious example. Watch this one. It's also relatively obvious, but it's starting to get more subtle. So watch this volley here from Busta, who's up close to the net. And it just doesn't even make it to the net. And the reason why it doesn't make it is because as the ball tracks towards his racket, the ball hits off the very top of the racket. And what I want you to notice here is how his racket twists right as the ball hits his racket. When you hit a good volley, when you're at the net, you have that put away opportunity and you hit the ball cleanly, the racket face will stay steady and stable. Any time you hit a shot where the racket twists aggressively in your hand, you know you did not make clean contact aka in the middle of the racket face. So as Busta hits this volley and the racket twists aggressively, the energy that should have been transferred into the ball does not get transferred into the ball. Instead, it just goes towards flipping the racket face open. And that's why on this shot, the ball bounces like before it even gets to the net. And not an easy shot by any means. But what's critical for you at home is when you, when you have this type of shot and you feel like you have an open opportunity and the ball falls way short, rather than think about, oh, did I bend my knees? Oh, did I keep my racket head up? Uh, did I step across, you know, on the shot? Just think about what did it feel like at contact? More times than not, in my experience, when players miss these shots close to the net, it's simply because they didn't hit the ball cleanly. So here's that example of Federer. He's on a serve and volley here against Zverev, has a wide open court. All he has to do is just hit this ball cleanly and he probably wins the points. But what happens, just like the example that we saw from the other two players, but this one a little bit more subtle. Watch the, the point of contact here. As the ball approaches his racket face, and Ro Roger's doing a beautiful job of just putting the racket there. If all he does is hit the middle of the racket, he probably wins this point. But as the ball approaches the racket, again, you'll see the racket twist right at contact. And it twists because there's energy from the ball hitting towards the frame. I don't think on this shot it actually literally hit the frame. And that's important. Just because you don't shank the ball right off the edge of the frame doesn't mean you didn't hit the ball cleanly. Just being a couple of strings off from the center still causes the racket to twist. And when the racket twists, the ball does not come off the strings the way that it should. And when it doesn't come off the strings with the right amount of energy, that's why the ball ends up just get, gets 
dumped into the net and it doesn't go over the net the way that it's supposed to. So the way that you tell, Roger here has a really relaxed hand and you should too on a large majority of your volleys. So when that racket twists in his hand, the fix here is not to clamp down harder and say, oh, I wasn't holding on to the racket tightly enough. The fix is to hit the middle of the strings. Had Roger hit the middle of the strings on this shot, he probably would have won the point. The reason why he hit the net was he was just a little off center. And hopefully that makes you feel better, by the way, you know? Like Roger is kind of renowned for his focus on the point of contact. And even though you see him so intensely, you know, focused, on the point of contact, sometimes he still just miss hits the ball. And it wasn't even that difficult of a shot. So hopefully, you know, it makes me feel better knowing that if Roger can miss hit and dump an easy volley into the net, so can I. Sometimes it happens. But that doesn't mean that we can't work on it. And in a little bit, I'll show you how to actually develop this and improve it. If you like what you're seeing and you're serious about improving your game, I highly recommend you go to EssentialTennisAcademy.com. This is the inside of the members area and within Academy, there's all these different categories of coaching, tons of different lesson modules that cover every part of the game. And you can check it out for free right now at EssentialTennisAcademy.com. Here's kind of a similar example of Djokovic hitting an approach shot, closing forwards, having the open courts, and then again, ball like, just doesn't even make it back to the net. It's, it's not even close. And on the slow motion replay, really apparent what's, uh, what's going on here. Uh, and what's happening is as he stretches out for this ball, not, not an easy volley, but certainly obviously a makeable shot for him. As the ball comes in and comes close to contact, you can see that he just simply didn't line the racket up correctly. And the ball just mishits. It's not completely off the frame, but it's enough off that you can see the trajectory of the shot ends up getting thrown off. And that's why the ball ends up just not even making it back to the net. And so right at the end of this video, I'm going to show you a drill that you can do that you can work on this specifically. But hopefully at this point, you're understanding it's not about the things I said before. Keep the racket head up, like turn to the side, step across and punch or whatever. All of those things, you can do all those things correctly. But if you can't hit the ball cleanly, you're gonna end up just missing a lot of really easy volleys. So with that, I've, I've got one other kind of way that players a lot of times miss these shots up close to the net. Let's get right into it, because it's really common and really important. Speaking of punching, tennis players of all levels frequently set up a point perfectly, and then they do way too much with the racket on kind of the critical, most important payoff shot, the final shot of the point. Here's an example of Andy Murray doing this. Wide open court and just kind of slapping the ball off the courts. And the reason why this happens is because of how he's moving his racket. He's hinging the racket back right here. You can see his racket is kind of tilted back towards the, the ceiling. And then as he hits, watch how his racket goes through the ball and closes. And so right here, you can see the tip of his racket pointing towards the net. So he's hinged the racket back and then hinged it through. And there's a lot of players that feel like that's the only way they can hit a put away volley. Now listen, Andy Murray has a million times better hands than I do, and probably you do, and his timing and athletic skill and eye-hand coordination and all of that is dramatically better. So he can get away with some of this kind of hinging action back and forth. For the vast majority of the rest of us, if we do any kind of that kind of uh, kind of slapping, you know, motion, which a lot of players feel like, you know, when they, when they're told to punch their volley, to put it away and hit it firmly, that's the type of motion. A lot of times you'll see, not always, but but frequently, and so that's why Andy misses this volley because all the different directions his strings are facing as he hinges back and hinges through. That's all the different directions the ball could go if the ball hits his racket and he mistimes it by just a tiny, tiny bit. So this is a really common mistake, not just for amateur players, but you'll see professional players make it as well. And it's something that you want to avoid at all costs. One more prime example here of how easy put away shots get messed up and then I'll, I'll direct you. Another example here of how not to approach these put away shots before I provide you with all the training details that you need on how to work on these shots. You'll see a serve and volley here. 
and then just a real, just really kind of aggressive. This is similar to what I was talking about with, with Andy Murray, with the initially the hinge back. This is like problem number one, because if the timing of when the ball arrives at the racket is just off, the ball goes flying someplace completely different than where he wants it to. And then the finish here is like aggressively down and even across the body here. And so this presents a huge problem because of timing, as I said. It, it introduces a huge degree of probability that the ball goes somewhere other than where you want it to go. Now, it doesn't mean that you can't ever use a little bit of hand to create a little bit more racket head speed, but this kind of movement is something I see from amateur players all the time, and they don't have the athletic tools. I don't have the athletic tools to be able to take this big of a swing at even an easy volley like that. So if you want to improve these shots and you want to avoid the miss hits and you want to avoid the sloppiness of the hinging, we've got some other lessons for you. You're going to see them right over here on this side of the screen. One focused on how to watch the ball. The other one uh, focused on minimizing the, the movement of the racket face. Do both of the drills and your volleys are going to improve dramatically. Your ability to put away balls is going to improve dram dramatically. If this was helpful, do me a favor, click the like button and stay tuned because part two of Ian versus Ira is coming out very soon.